let's talk about aerial photography now whenever we see a horizontal perspective what happens is on the ground if there is something in front of me what i'll see actually is a horizontal perspective but this is very very different from a perspective that you see when you are above something so this is what is aerial photography it's also known as a bird's eye view that means consider yourself to be a bird flying high above and then how the landscape appears to you is what is aerial photography but in a general photography what we do we uh, simply see what is present in front of us so there are two different things that we consider so when we talk about maps and when we talk about aerial photography a major difference is the kind of projections that are used and the perspective that is there we'll be coming on the same topic in a while before that let's understand certain general terms that would help us sail through this lecture so first of all the person definitely who is doing a uh, aerial photography is a aerial photographer the results that come up is the aerial photograph now on the aerial photograph you have four corners either the corners would be marked or the center would be marked and this is what is known as the fiducial marks now these fiducial marks are very very important to help you understand how and where the actual object is now again a very important concept is when i am taking a aerial photography what happens is the aeroplane or the helicopter through which the camera has been put up is constantly moving so let's say at this point when the uh, aeroplane is at this point what happens is this is the area that is covered now when it moves a little ahead you would have another section that would be covered but there would be overlap that would be seen so there are forward overlaps or backward overlaps depending on in which direction the camera actually is going okay so that is again important between the two images that are captured from the aerial photograph there is a overlap we need to remove or take those into consideration when we are doing our studies which we would understand in our higher lectures the next important thing is the distance now understand this very carefully you have the camera now this camera is clicking a picture now this picture is clicked for the ground surface that is there but where is the image formed the image is formed on the negative plane so let's say this is the point or the lens through which you have the image that is being captured and this is the ground region that is covered so this distance from the lens to the ground is what is uh, is what is known as the actual distance or the nadir which is the perpendicular line however this distance from the lens to the negative plane where the image would come is what is known as the uh, principal point and what we understand by taking a map scale into account or the scale for the aerial photography into account is a ratio between the distance uh the the principal point that is located or the focal length that is the distance between the length uh, sorry the distance between the lens and the negative which is formed versus the distance between the lens and the ground surface so that ratio through that ratio we can find out the map uh, the scale of a aerial photograph now this is the very fundamental aspect that we need to understand before we proceed with all of these terms in further detail so this was just a quick glimpse now coming up to why do we actually use aerial photography and what are the advantages before we understand the various ways under which or the types of aerial photographies that could be done so the first is uses there are two primary uses the first is photogrammetry and the next is image interpretation what is the difference image interpretation simply means when you have a photograph that is being clicked you are trying to understand whether it is a mountain whether it's a river you are trying to identify the various features of the landscape and that is 
image interpretation so even if i am very good aerial photographer i have clicked numerous photographs but i am not able to comprehend it it's totally useless so image interpretation is a very very important element the second important part that we need to understand is photogrammetry photogrammetry basically is a science to make reliable measurements whenever i am measuring something my measurements should be reliable otherwise again the same thing there is no use of doing it so precision in terms of length height breadth all of those are important characteristics which are part of photogrammetry so two important uses that we have talked about now if we look on to the scenario of india you have three major wings which actually do the air survey in india under the directorate of air survey now these three flying agencies are indian air force which is also known as a now a b and c are the three categories whenever you have an aerial photograph you would have the number marked so it would be either a b or c and based on that you can identify whether it is done by indian air force whether it is done by nrsa and so on so indian air force is marked as a the next is the air survey company kolkata which is marked b and the third is the nrsa or the national remote sensing agency which is based in hyderabad and marked as c so these three are officially uh the three agencies the fl three flying agencies which capture the aerial photographs of india now if you are looking to procure it for educational purpose you can definitely do it through the directorate of air survey survey of india so survey of india ultimately brings up all these maps into publication why are these aerial photographs very very important there are four major aspects that we say first important aspect is the vantage point that means you are getting a birds eye view which you cannot get get from a normal camera so if i want to get a top view of something in a very simple language therefore i need aerial photographs the second important point is the time freezing ability now time freezing ability means i have clicked the photograph today now if i want to check the historic record i can easily say in 2020 this was the scenario and the one photograph which is being clicked in 2030 or 2040 would show on the further scenarios so this is a kind of time freezing ability to make historic records the third important advantage is a broadened sensitivity now our eyes are usually sensitive to 0.4 to 0.7 micrometers however this sensitivity is much much more broader for film which ranges from 0.3 to 0.9 so you have better precision and better sensitivity that could be actually seen the next is a kind of three dimensional perspective since it's taken in a uniform interval over a given space you have a better three dimensional perspective that has been obtained so those are some of the basic advantages now what are the types of aerial photographs these types of aerial photographs depend on two thing first is the position of the camera axis and the second is the scale that we use based on the position of cam camera axis we have three criteria th or three types that is a vertical photograph a low oblique and a high oblique now the words might appear difficult but it's actually very very simple so what happens in a vertical photograph the camera is vertically above the ground surface and since it's vertically above the ground surface you have a very small area that is captured first of all second in real world this is not practical in real world either there would be ground distortion the second important thing is our earth is curved so there are again distortions based on it so if this distortion is less than 3 degree only 3 degree if this distortion is less than 3 degree we say that this is a kind of a uh, near distorted image that is being formed and if this distortion is more than 3 degrees we say this is a tilted photograph okay so that is the most important thing so practically this vertically 0 degree if we want to understand it in that way is not achievable but yes 
uh, if we consider it it is one of the kind of photograph which cover a very very smaller area the next is low oblique and high oblique now low oblique shows the angle of tilt as you can see in the image here you have this as the camera axis from the vertical how many degrees are there so a distortion of uh, or an angle formed from the vertical to 15 to 30 degrees is a low oblique photograph now low oblique photograph is basically used in recognizance or military surveys so when you are talking about military survey of a geopolitical boundary this is very very important you usually do a low oblique photography the third is a high oblique photography now high oblique the camera is further tilted and this angle increases up to 60 degree now when the angle increases up to 60 degree you have a very wide area that could be seen and most important is the horizon so high oblique is the only case where you have horizon that is seen what does that mean it means that since your camera is tilted so much your angle can go far off till the horizon or your angle of coverage would be very very uh, big now in a vertical photograph when you would have the results of the photograph it would be a perfect square grid no distortions in a low oblique you would have bigger squares in the form of distortion if i talk and if i try to divide that uh, photograph into small grids i would see bigger grids towards the forend and smaller grid, grids towards the back end what does that mean the angle where you are actually focusing the camera you would have clear picture of that but away from that the picture would become uh, less detailed for that area as simple as that so where the camera is focusing you would have a maximum detailed picture and that detail would slowly and gradually try to uh, or slowly and gradually start to decrease and if it is a high oblique definitely since it's going up to the horizon so it would become very very small or a very very minute details that could be given for the things that are very very close to the horizon so this was the first classification of the types of aerial photographs which is based on the position of the camera axis and this if i want to summarize again uh, for uh, vertical you would have a square shape however for low oblique or a high oblique you would have a trapezoid formation the angles is should be less than three degree for vertical up to 30 degrees for low oblique and up, uh, more than 30 degrees till 60 degrees usually for high oblique the coverage is the smallest for a vertical one and highest for a high oblique again uh, the advantages is vertical photographs are usually used as topographical maps of a given area. Uh, low oblique are used for military surveys and high oblique are usually used for purpose of illustration. Uh, that is the biggest difference that we see. The next is based on scale. Based on scale, again, we can have three types of aerial photographies. Those could be large area. Uh, medium uh, large scale medium scale and small scale now large scale what does this mean i have a scale of let's say 1 is to 15000 that means 1 centimeter on ground 1 centimeter on map represents 15000 meters on ground as simple as that that means the greater details are given so a simplest way to understand it is i am zooming the camera now when it is a large scale photograph i am just focusing on a given colony of a city when it is a medium scale i am focusing on the city so my camera you can understand is moving up might be up or uh, you can understand it far whatever is convenient to you but the idea is i am in the large scale photograph i am covering very smaller area with finer details but as my camera moves up I would have bigger area so from a large scale which could be a colony of the city to a medium scale which could be the city and to a large scale which could be the state or the district we could say so this is a large scale a small a medium scale and a small scale map okay so large scale map covers a smaller area gives you greater details 
Small scale map covers a larger area. Usually for a small scale, the ratio is 1 is to 30,000. For a large scale, the ratio is 1 is to 15,000 or even larger than that. The next is the geometry. Now, the geometry of aerial photographs is very, very important. Again, we identify three types of geometries here. These are either the parallel projections, orthogonal projections or central projections. What are the difference? Parallel projections, a very simple demonstration to understand is I have a triangle. Okay. Now this triangle, I have the three edges. The edge of the first point, okay, is falling parallel. The second point is falling parallel and the third point is falling parallel. So there would be a triangle on the ground that would be seen. Okay, or I could consider that this ground triangle is being captured as this triangle on the map or on the photograph and this is a parallel projection. Now, the same parallel projection I move. This becomes a perpendicular projection where the lines are perpendicular. So when the per projection is perpendicular, I would say this is orthogonal. When it is not perpendicular but parallel, we say it is a parallel projection. Usually, whenever we talk about orthogonal projections in geography, we say you have light source coming from infinite and that's exactly the same thing you would have a perpendicular aspect that would be seen. The next is the central projection. Now, central projection means you have the lines of the point which converge at a point. Now, this is a kind of projection which is used in aerial photographies most commonly. How? Because you have a camera, from the camera lens you are capturing the ground and the negative is being formed on the top. So this is the point where you have all the light that converges and therefore this is a central projection. Again, you would have the concept of similar triangles that would come up because the triangle or the area that is being formed on the ground versus the area being formed onto the camera plate. So both of those would have the triangle, would be the triangles but not congruent. They are not exactly overlapping one another but the dimensions would be the same. One would be smaller or bigger than another and that's the basic idea how they are similar triangles. So that is where we understand the basic geometry of aerial photography. Now as I said, uh, if I consider this example again, you would have the camera axis that is here. Now from the camera axis, the line which is going perpendicularly down, what would happen? This would be the nadir and on the top you would have the principal point that would be there and this height through which it is flying is known as a flying height and this same distance onto the negative would be the focal length as we al already discussed in the starting the ratio of the focal length to the flying height would give you the scale for the uh, aerial photographs. So that is again a very very important concept that we need to understand. The distance between the camera lens and the negative is the focal length. The distance between the camera lens and the ground surface is the flying height. The ratio between the two would give you the scale for the aerial photographs. Now, what is actually a difference between an aerial photograph and a map? The first and the foremost important point that I said was there is a difference in the projection and a difference between the perspective. How? Projection in the case of aerial photography would be a central projection as we already understood because you have light converging to a point which is the lens of the camera. However, when you are doing a map, it is an orthogonal projection because you have uh, perpendicular uh, lines that are seen and therefore you have a straight coverage of a given area that is there and therefore for maps you have an orthogonal projection. For maps, you have a geometrically better representation of the earth. However, there could be distortions in the case of aerial photography and these distortions are minimum in the center. And as you move away from the center of the photograph, the distortions would be much higher. So distortions are less in the case of maps as compared to the aerial photography. The scale for the aerial photograph does not remain uniform. It changes with the flying height, it changes with 
the reduction and the enlargement uh, which cannot be actually uh, done very easily in the case of a aerial photograph but it is much more simpler in the case of a map that is done the next important concept is the perspective now perspective and uh, basically what we try to understand is we move from a perspective view to a planimetric view or a plan view what is the difference perspective view is a view where you have all the light which is reflected from the earth is focused at the center of the camera so that is a perspective view however under a plan view you consider it a fact that every point on the ground is being observed from exactly vertically up okay so let's say this is the landscape that we have so each point of the landscape would be observed from a point which is vertically above that point and that is a planimetric view perspective view this whole landscape is there and all of these lights and this is the center point which basically broadens up and you have the coverage of the region that is seen so very very important concept map we have a planimetric view because every point on the ground is being seen as it is seen vertically up from that region however in a aerial photograph it is a perspective view very very important concept the next is the scale of a aerial photograph now there are numerous ways to calculate the scale of the aerial photographs the three common ways are the three methods that we would be discussing today the first is establishing a relation between the photo distance versus the ground distance or the relation between the photo distance versus a map distance if we are trying to relate a aerial photograph to a map and finally the ratio of focal length to the flying height as we have already talked about so let's discuss each of these methods one by one the very first method is understanding a relation between the photo distance and the ground distance now this is simply a ratio let's say i have a simple numerical here for you the distance between two points on an aerial photograph is 2 cm the known distance between the same two points on the ground is how much it is 1 km so what is the scale of the aerial photograph now this is very very simple 2 cm is to 1 km now i'll change this kilometer into centimeters and i'll find the ratio so that that becomes 1 is to 50000 as simple as that now this is the scale now this is the scale for my aerial photograph and we have already understood scales in our previous lectures on uh, the practicals of geography so just go back and check those out if you have any doubts regarding scale and competition of the scale the next is the second method the second method talks about the establishing relation between a photo distance and a map distance now how do we do that i have a very simple numerical again for you my numerical is the distance between the two measured points on the map is 2 cm and the corresponding distance on the aerial photograph is 10 cm now understand the same two points i am talking about on the map it is 2 cm only but in my photographs it is 10 cm two things one is the map and other is the aerial photograph now the distance between the same two points on the map is 2 cm where the scale is 1 is to 50000 and on the aerial photograph it's 10 cm and i don't know the scale i have to calculate the scale so how how would i actually do it so i'll do it very simply the multiplication of this 5 into 50000 would be equal to 10 into x which is unknown quantity here so 10 into x would be equal to 2 into 50000 and i'll calculate the x x value and obviously since this 10 cm is bigger than 2 cm that is given here my uh, ratio of the scale that would be present here would be 1 is to 10000 is smaller than 50000 as simple as that or a kind of larger large scale map that would be seen okay so smaller denominator makes it large scale map as simple as that so that is a basic idea the next and the third important method to find this out is establishing a relation between the focal length and the flying height as we already discussed so this is the most simplest of those so flying height and the focal length let's say the focal length of the camera is 15 cm and this uh, camera 
is in an aeroplane which is at a height of let's say 7500 meters above the ground surface so this is the map scale so it becomes 15 centimeters is to 7500 into 100 centimeters and then i calculate the value for 1 centimeter is equal to 7500 into 100 divided by 15 and i solve this so it becomes 1 is to 50000 again so this is the map uh, this this is the scale for the aerial photograph clear now this is a general layout for an aerial photograph what are the kind of informations given so these four points as you can see here are the fiducial marks and they are just the guiding point as to what area would be covered on the ground the next is the tilt indicator this says how much is the degree of the tilt whether it is a low oblique whether it's a high oblique or a vertical uh, photograph that is being clicked this indicates the flying height how high is the aeroplane actually is or the camera actually is be it in the aeroplane or the helicopter the next is the photo specifications now this is where what we talked about the ABC classification so this says 793 B 523 what does it mean 793 is the photo specification which is maintained by 73 AP uh, APFPS which is the directorate of the survey of India okay so that's the number that is being assigned to it B as we said is the air survey company the second in the list the first was the Indian Air Force the second is the air survey company Kolkata and the third is NRSA Hyderabad so this is B so it is air survey company Kolkata then you have five which shows that on the strip five you have uh, 23 is the photo that is being clicked on the strip 5 so it is 5-23 so that's how we understand the photo specification of any of the aerial photographs that we click in India so those were some of the general and a very interesting outline about what is air photography how do we actually do it and I believe now many of you would be interested in reading or understanding or doing image interpretations for aerial photographs which is a very important part of your research later on wish you a very good luck we'll be coming up with many important and interesting lectures in your future videos